Elon Musk's neurotech startup Neuralink has successfully implanted one of its devices in a human for the first time on Sunday. Let's bring back in Yahoo Finance's Dan Halley to discuss more. Uh, Dan, what do we know at this juncture about the significance of this? Yeah, not too much, honestly. Basically, just what, what Elon Musk had kind of tweeted, saying that uh, they did the first implant, uh, the patient's recovering well, and they're starting to see uh, some uh, signals, neuron spike detection is what he said, uh, from the device itself. That This is supposed to uh, eventually be something that will allow people to interact with their devices, whether that's you know, smartphones, laptops, things like that. He said uh, in a post, imagine if Stephen Hawking could uh, be able to communicate more quickly than uh, the technology that he previously used, which I, I believe was uh, eye tracking based. So, you know, this would be something that uh, would be worlds faster just because it's coming directly through the brain. Now, I think it's important to point out that there are rivals that are doing this and some that are further ahead. And there has been some controversy around Neuralink, especially with uh, it comes to the treatment of some of the test animals uh, that had died as a result of uh, some of the rapid pace of the innovation that they're trying to do here. Uh, but it really is uh, an impressive feat and just, you know, another one of Elon Musk's uh, ventures, this probably being uh, one of the more delicate, I mean, how, you can't really say that though, because you're talking about rockets and electric cars, but mm -hmm. I mean, this feels, uh, you know, I guess more delicate in the sense that you're, you're working with living people and their brains. And, you know, the, the idea is to give people a better life, um, but, the, the testing is going to take quite a while before we actually see a product on the market. Yeah, Dan, talk to us just a little bit about what we know a testing timeline could potentially look like for this, given the fact that, like you said, there has been a lot of skepticism because just, just in terms of the safety of this product. But on the other hand, there is certainly a lot to be excited about when you talk about the fact that this could significantly enhance uh, the lives of those who are not able to use their limbs right now, who are suffering from ALS. Yeah, I, I think the, the big thing here is that, you know, this test is about the robot that, that you uh, kind of saw on screen for a second there to be able to actually, you know, print these things and get them into uh, a person. You, you can't do this with human hands, they say. So you need to use uh, a, a, the robot itself. And then to ensure that you're actually getting the signal for the device itself as well. So that's really what this test is about. And then, you know, they'll obviously try to do more uh, depending on what kind of success they see as far as those capabilities. But yeah, I think for, for a timeline, it's gonna be uh, years at this point. They have to still go through uh, all the, the appropriate government uh, regulations. This is something that's a highly regulated field. It's, you know, it, it's taken them quite some time to get to the human testing level. Uh, there uh, was talk that Elon Musk was unhappy with the speed at which the company was moving. He wanted it faster and faster and faster. Uh, and so, you know, we'll just have to see how this test goes. We have to wait for an update there. But you know, Elon Musk seems to be the only way we're getting those. Even Neuralink's site doesn't have an update uh, about this particular patient. Dan. That's interesting. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Dan, we're going to continue to track this as we know you will as well. Thanks, Dan.